my comfort In trouble he's my stay He tells me every care on him to roll He's the lily of the valley The bright and morning star He's the fairest of ten thousands to my soul Now we need uh, some of you experts now You're supposed to say uh, hallelujah So don't forget that when you go, he tells me every care on him to roll. Hallelujah. Okay. I mean, we don't want to miss heaven. We got to get that in there. We got to get it right. He all my grief has taken and all my sorrows born. In temptation, he's my strong and mighty time. I have all for him forsaken. And all my idols torn from my heart And now he keeps me by his power Oh, all the world forsake me And Satan tempts me so Through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal Hallelujah! He's the lily of the valley The bright and morning star He's the fairest of ten thousands to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. While I live by faith and do His blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I've nothing now to fear. With His manna, He my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory, to see His blessed face, Where rivers of delight shall ever roll. Hallelujah! He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousands to my soul. Let's lift our hearts and praise Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Brother French is coming. And uh, we're going to get out of the way. God bless him. Amen. Why don't we clap the, our hands to the Lord one more time and just give him praise. Amen. It feels good to be in the church this morning. Amen. Amen. Such a special presence of God that is here. How many love the Lord today? Are you thankful to be in his presence? And, uh, and I just am excited to be in the sanctuary with you. I'm usually upstairs with the little kids, but I love getting to be with the big kids every once in a while. So uh, it's an honor to be with you. I am going to ask you to stand just quickly for the reading of the word, and then I'll let you be seated. Um, my, my youngest son, Ezra, is um, two now. He's going to be three. And he started this thing lately where um, when I get home, uh, he'll instantly say, Daddy, can I take your shoes off? <laughs> and it, it confused me for a while. I'm like, this, this two-year-old attacks my feet, like every time I walk into the house. And it finally hit me that what he's trying to say is, would you stay a while? Would you, would you not go anywhere? Would you take your shoes off? And, and you've been working, Daddy. Stay home. And, uh, you know, there's just something about the heart of the father when your child says, would you stay a while? Would you spend some time with me? Doesn't matter what you have going on, you're going to stop it. You know what I'm talking about? And how many wants to spend some time with your father this morning in the Word? And we're going to take a little time, spend some time with him, and I'm thankful for his presence today. Uh, Psalm 73 and verse 2. Psalm chapter 73 and verse 2. Aren't you thankful to have Pastor and Sister French back from Oregon camp meeting? Love them very much. We miss them. Big shout out to our associate pastor, Brother Ryan, Sister Taylor, for all that they've done during this busy summer. We're thankful for them. We love them. Thankful for everything that God is doing. Amen? All right. Psalm chapter 73 and verse 2. And if you could, let's just read this out loud together. We'll do this youth group style. Here we go. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled 
and my steps had nearly slipped. We're going to skip down to verse 17. Watch this. It says, until. Can you shout that with me? Say, until. I love this. It says, until I went into the sanctuary of God. How many has ever experienced that, that things were looking pretty rough until you got to the house of God? I want to talk to you for a few moments. I want to teach on this topic. Atmosphere matters. But I want to give it a subtitle and call it the danger of a lukewarm atmosphere. Could you put your Bibles down? Let's lift our hands. I know it's early and we're tired, but would you pray with me right now? Let's just pray over God's word that he would speak through us today, that he'd talk to us. Jesus, we love you today. We thank you so much for the opportunity to be in your presence. We love you. We worship you. God, we thank you for the opportunity to get to be in your presence today. God, I pray you'd open our our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, open our hearts to receive, and our minds to comprehend everything that you want to say to us in this place. And we'll be sure to give you all the glory and all the honor. Why don't you give them just an early morning praise right now? It is that something about that early morning praise. It Sometimes I wonder if it means a little more to God just because you're tired and you praise him anyways. You know what I'm saying? There's something special about that. Everybody said in Jesus name. If you got somebody next to you, smile at them and just say atmosphere matters. You may be seated. Jesus name. The planet on which we live is it's a it's a pretty amazing place really. It's a beautiful place. Have you ever visited somewhere and just been in awe at the splendor of God's creation? How beautiful of a a planet he's allowed us to be on. I know sometimes when you go downtown Atlanta and there's garbage all over the streets, it's hard to remember that. But then you get outside of the city and you see God's creation and it really is a beautiful place. From the stunning majesty of the Grand Canyon the Great Wall of China. This world is really just an amazing, beautiful place to live. There's a wide variety of natural wonders happening right under our noses that many of us take for granted. One of them being that our planet is constantly circling the sun. Now, you may not be able to feel it, How many remembers this in school when you first learned this and you were like, wow, right? And if you're a nerd like me, you're, you're, I'm 31 and I'm still like, wow, that's amazing. Uh, we're, We're, you may not be able to feel it, but we're moving right now. The earth is moving through the atmosphere right now. Now, I can't feel it, and you can't feel it, but it's still happening. The the sun is roughly 100 times bigger than Earth, and it exerts a gravitational pull on, on the planets in our solar system, and that's what causes us to take a lap around the sun Every year, y'all like, I didn't sign up for a, a, a school lesson this morning, Brother Nate. Well, when God created the earth, he created the atmosphere. Can you say atmosphere? He creates the atmosphere just right for human life. Think about this. Any nerds in the house? Please, there'll be a few in here. Just a few nerds? No? Oh, it's just me. Okay. Watch this. This is amazing. If gravity were just slightly off, just a a little bit off, we'd float away into space. Sounds kind of scary, doesn't it? Anybody want to be an astronaut when you were a kid? You know? Then you get older and you're like, that doesn't look safe. I don't know. (laughs) I'm not sure about that. Right, well, 
If gravity were just slightly off, we would float away into space. And if the atmospheric pressure was just slightly off, we'd be crushed. Think of this with me. If Earth's atmosphere were just slightly closer to the sun, we'd explode into flames. I know you're enjoying this encouraging message today, but if, if we move just a little bit, just slightly farther away, we'd all freeze. Atmosphere matters. Where you are positioned matters. Stars and planets don't speak, but if they could, they would tell you. Atmosphere matters. When you get farther from the sun, you start getting cold. But if you could get a little closer, you begin to catch fire because your location matters. The atmosphere that you cultivate all around you can drastically change your mindset and determine whether or not you walk in victory. Now, I'm a youth pastor, and I will tell you that I deal with ages 13 to, to 19, and we have a lot of young people that come through this church throughout the summer and throughout the school year. We have a, a large number of young people that this church is touching their life. They're coming to class. They're coming to church. They're coming to prayer. They're coming to special events. They're coming to exalt and reset. How many are thankful for a church? We're reaching people. We're trying to reach the community. Sister Rachel and I are kind of those weirdos that we'll go to the park and take our kids to play. And if we see teenagers there, we're inviting them to church. We're telling them, you need to come to our youth group. It's an amazing place. We have fun. We learn about the word of God. Because the reason we want to get them, see, the reason we want to get them to church is because atmosphere matters. You say, Pastor, why are you so concerned about us getting people to come to church? Uh, uh, Brother Ryan, why are you always telling us that we need to invite people to church? Here's why. If we can get them into the presence of God, if we can get them into the right atmosphere, everything can change for them. Somebody say atmosphere matters. It can change everything. The kind of day that you'll have today is greatly impacted by where you spent your time yesterday and the day before that. This is why in youth ministry, and I, I know I talk about youth ministry a lot, but it's just a big part of my life, but this is why a lot of young people in our culture struggle to feel the presence of God on Sunday and they don't understand, Brother Nathan, I'm here, I'm in the altar, I'm struggling to feel the presence of God, and, 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 and Pastor preached for 45 minutes, and, and, I, and I, I'm not feeling anything because this culture expects you to undo something in 45 minutes when they've spent seven days in a totally different atmosphere. They go into shock because they have transitioned atmospheres. This is why we teach on prayer and fasting and reading the word of God and a life of personal devotion. Because when you get into this place, it should not be the first time that you've prayed this week. It's easier to say amen when you've been saying it all week. It's a lot easier to say hallelujah when you get in your car and say, I love you, Jesus. I know there's nobody around and pastor doesn't see me, but Lord, I just love you. Any, can I get a witness in the house? Sometimes it feels good and you ever got your ugly cry face on just right there in your car. And, and, and you had to pull over because that song hit a little different. That song hit just right. They, the, the song came on, I love you, Jesus, I worship and adore you. And, you, and that little tear co comes down because wherever you go, you are setting an atmosphere that's saying, I'm going to live in the presence of God. 
I wish somebody would help me right now. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. You don't have to just feel the presence of God when you come to church. It is the will of God that you live in his presence, that you abide in his presence, that you walk in his presence. Joy, I'm glad that you feel joy when you come to the house of God, and you should feel joy when you come to the house of God. But can I tell you that tomorrow's not Sunday, tomorrow's Monday, and you can still feel the joy of God tomorrow. And the next day is Tuesday and you can w- wake up and worship and say, God, I'm going to give today to you as well. You, I want to tell you what revival looks like. It's when people start acting like the church outside of church service times. Well, my goodness. Your nearness to the sun will determine what kind of life you live. Are you hot or are you cold? It's determined by your nearness to the sun. How close am I to him? I want to ask you a question. I know I'm teaching this. I got a little preachy. I promise I'm going to teach here. Have you ever felt far from God? I'm going to be the first one to raise my hand. Have you ever felt far from God? I know that I have. And it's, is that a good feeling or it's kind of a bad feeling, isn't it? Like we don't like to feel far from God. I've been there before. before. And when you feel far from God, it may be time to, to check your atmosphere. You might have to do an atmosphere check. And you have to ask yourself some questions. Brother Jinx is going to put these up here for me. Here's four questions that you should ask yourself when you are feeling far from God. Is this okay this morning? I know we're kind of taking a little slow. I'll be done on time, I promise. Number one, when was the last time that I prayed? This is something that you have to ask yourself. You know, I have to be careful. Can I just be real and transparent? Just kind of open up a little bit. Here's where I have to be careful. Sometimes I can get so caught up trying to do the work of God that I forget to spend time with God. Can we just be real for just a second? When you're doing three weeks of youth camp, it can be hard to find time to pray because they want to stay up till 3 a.m. and get up at 5 a.m. and play basketball all day and have church all day and volleyball all day. But listen, it takes an intentional mindset. You have to do this on purpose. This will not happen by accident. You have to be intentional and wake up every day and say, when am I going to spend time with God today? Because we find ourselves in a merry Martha situation where one wants to work for him and has good intentions, but the other sees that there's value at his feet. There's value at his feet. And if I'm going to work for him, I need him to speak to me. I need him to invest in me. I have to hear what Jesus has to say at the dinner table if I'm going to set the table for somebody else to come eat. Oh, my goodness. See, some people don't have anything to share with anybody else because they haven't spent any time to let Jesus tell them what to do. This is, this is what you have to do. When you feel far from God, you have to say, when was the last time? I know, I, I'm, can we just be real? I'm living for God. Maybe you're living holy. Maybe you're doing everything right. You're going by all the rules, and that's great. That's the will of God for your life. But you can miss out when you're doing all that and you don't have relationship with him. And say, God, would you speak to me? When was the last time that I prayed? Number two, (laughs) and I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but when was the last time I went to church? Think about this. When you get into the presence of God and with the people of God, That is the will of God. And God can do powerful, special things 
in the house of God. And sometimes you can be feeling a little far from God and you realize, man, like I was sick last week and I missed last Sunday. And then I went, I went to, out of town and I missed that Sunday. And you start to realize that you're feeling a little farther from the sun than you used to. Is somebody going to be real with me in the house? I'm telling you, 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 you know, you start feeling a little less spiritual when you don't go to church. You, you start feeling a little farther from him. So it's a good thing. And I, I know it's crazy, but we have to define the lines like this in this culture. You have to literally say, you know what? When was the last time I went to church? And some people ask themselves that question and they're like, it's been like, it's been like a month since I went to church. Well, there's your problem right there. <laughs> problem solved. It's not always hard, folks. Sometimes it's an easy answer. Number three, when was the last time I read my Bible? Because prayer is where I speak to him, but his word is how he speaks to me. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel the early morning praise right now. See, some people take the time to speak to him, but they don't take the time to let him speak to you. And you have to ask yourselves, when was the last time that you sat down with the word of God and you read and you just listened? You just listened for his voice. And I'm telling you, it's in that still place. It's in that quiet place. That's where revelation comes. That's where personal conviction and revelation comes. And four, when was the last time I gave God praise? Now, I'm probably going to stomp on a few toes here, but I'm just going to say it. You can come to church and not give God praise. It is very possible to go to a church service and not praise God. Can I be real for just a second? There's nowhere in the Bible that says walking into the church is an act of praise. Well, my goodness, I feel something right now. Nowhere in your Bible does it says praise him with walking in the door. A lot of us think that just because we go to church that we offered God some praise. But that is not the definition of praise. And that's not a biblical perspective of how to change the atmosphere of, of a service. You know, Brother Hargrove mentioned at uh, camp this week, he said that some people are thermometers and some people are thermostats. Thermometers just stand there and try to figure out what the temperature is. Thermostats set the temperature. What do you want to be? Do you want to walk in and just say, you know, there's a lot of thermometers that walk into church. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's, that song, that's kind of getting them excited. They like that song. And you're kind of watching the, th the thermometer, to see what kind of service this is going to be. And it has to get to a certain, certain temperature before you'll do anything. But God didn't call you to be a thermometer. He called you to be a thermostat. Because when you walk into a place, you should start to set the temperature. It, it is you that changes the atmosphere. That's why an apostolic can walk into a business and people can begin to feel something shift. It's an amazing thing as an apostolic when you have the Holy Ghost and you've been baptized in Jesus name. We see it all the time with our with our beautiful godly women that live and walk in holiness and they walk into a business and people just say, where do you go to church? Well, I don't even tell you I go to church. Oh, you go to church. Where do you go to church? That's because just you being there began to change that atmosphere. 
That's what God has called us to be. Praise changes the atmosphere. So when you feel far from God, you start feeling cold. If you want to catch some fire, you got to get, get a little bit closer to him. Can we lift our hands for just a moment? I'm about to move on, but let's just thank the Lord right now. Jesus, we love you. We thank you, Jesus. Man, it feels good in the house of God this morning. Revelations 3 and 15. This is the NIV translation. And uh, Brother Ryan, don't kill me. I know this isn't our favorite translation, but I'm going to use it this morning just for a minute. Revelations 3.15 says, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one (laughs) or the other. But because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. Now, this is some harsh verbiage. The Lord is not playing games at this moment. This is a friendly translation. One translation says, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. This is how anti-lukewarm your God is. He uses very harsh verbiage because he wants you to know that it is not the will of God for you to be neither hot nor cold. And just live in this in-between weird state of Christianity. That is not the will of God for your life. If I want to help you because this has been revelation for me. And I want to share it with you. It's simple, but I believe it really changed my life. If you're here today and you feel close to God, I'm excited for you. And God has good things for you. But if you're here today and you feel cold, I want you to know that that does not discourage me. I want you to hear me for just a moment. The presence of God and an atmosphere change can change all of that. I want to encourage you right now that if I asked you if you feel far from God and you said yes, I do not want you to hang your head today because God can work with that. I need you to hear me. This is revelation. God is not afraid of your cold nature right now. Cold Christians do not scare me. Lukewarm ones do. I want to help you. John, the author of Revelation, said, I know your deeds, that you're neither cold nor hot. And he says this, you know, I wish you were either one or the other. I could deal with that. If you could just admit that you're far from God, I'm okay with that because God can work with a heart that knows they're far from him. I'm going to tell you what gets dangerous when you're far from God and you think you're okay. I'm going to help somebody this morning. I just got a few minutes. I don't get to be with the big kids much. You got to help me right now. You got to help me. God is not afraid or intimidated By how far you feel from him. When you cry out for the help of Zion, he will come. He's not worried about it. He said, just call on me. I'll be right there. What God spews out of his mouth is a form of Christianity that says, I'm good. I'm fine. Actually, God's okay with this. I mean, I I don't really, you know. God doesn't really care if I go to church or not. God doesn't actually really care if I praise him because he gave me revelation that I can actually praise him in my mind and I can just kind of run a lap in my mind. And he told me that. You know what kind of people I'm talking about. That somehow God gave them a word that's not in his word. Somehow God gave them a revelation That's not in the word of God because nobody else is good enough for that revelation but them. 
and it's contrary to what's actually in the word. And they use spirituality. They use Christianity to try to accomplish selfish lack of devotion and consecration. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. God spews that out of his mouth. If you're far from him, he says, that's no problem. I got you. I'm going to pull you close to me. I'm going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. But God says, if you're going to just act like your revelation is more important than my word, then I'm just going to spew you right out because you got to get to a place where you know that you need help. One of the first things that they'll tell uh, an alcoholic or a drug addict is that the first thing you need to know is that you need help. But what does an alcoholic do? No, I'm fine. I can handle this. What does a drug addict do? No, I can handle this. The first step to seeing change is when somebody says, you know what? I think I need help. And God says, I can work with that. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Can you lift your hands for just a moment? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. God's not intimidated by your farness from him. He can work with that. But stop trying to pretend like you're okay. Stop trying to pretend like you don't need anything from his word. Here's the crazy thing. Let me help you. God will show grace and long suffering to someone who is hot or cold. But somebody that pretends to be both is considered lukewarm. Hot is when you're close to the flame of God. Cold is when you're far from God. And Jesus will work with that. But his patience runs out with believers that spend time in both atmospheres. Because lukewarm is a place between hot and cold. It's exposure to two atmospheres. People become lukewarm by spending too much time in between atmosphere. Here's the revelation. Lukewarm is farther from God than cold is. You're farther from God in a lukewarm state than you are when you're cold. Because it's at your coldest state. It's when you're farthest from the sun. And you get in that atmosphere and you say, I need to get closer to him. I need to I need to speak to him. I need him to speak to me. Luke 16 and 13 says, no servant can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. It's crazy that lukewarm is farther from God than cold is. Lukewarm is a heart that is willing and content to spend time in a hot versus cold atmosphere that is not sustainable. Holiness cannot be sustained in that atmosphere. Conviction, consecration, and a life of devotion cannot be sustained in between atmospheres. In order to live with a sustainable spiritual atmosphere, You have to be willing and able to create an atmosphere of praise and prayer. You have to be close to God when no one is watching. I have a question for you. Brother Jinx is going to put it on the screen. Would you drink the milk? Would you drink the milk? What if I told you that this milk is is fine? You should drink it. It's this glass of milk. Here's the thing. Um, see, S- Sister French used to always get upset at Pastor because he has one thing. He, he, he's basically perfect in every way except there's this one thing. And, and, and the ladies are going to say amen. That it's this weird inability that he has. It's, he's not able to do it. It's actually an, it, it's almost a handicap. When he takes milk out of the fridge, he cannot put it back into it. Anybody know this this problem? A lot of men have this problem. You take the milk out, and you only have 
one gallon, and you got Captain Crunch ready. You know, you woke up ready to give God some praise. You about to give God a Captain Crunch praise, and you're ready. And it's it's not that fruity Captain Crunch. It's the peanut butter Captain Crunch. You know what I'm talking about? And you get it ready, and you go to the kitchen. This was basically my childhood in a nutshell. Go to the kitchen to get my cereal. And I realized that dad had left out the milk. And the milk was boiling 175 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's foiled. <laughs> it got... Anybody know what I'm talking about? What if I told you? Would you drink this milk? I mean, it was by the fridge. I mean, it was, just, it was just like three feet from the fridge for three days. It's right there. Why won't you drink that milk? The only difference between milk that's good and milk that's spoiled is the atmosphere in which it spends its time. It's just the atmosphere. One atmosphere is hot. One atmosphere is cold. One atmosphere sustains it. And one atmosphere deteriorates it. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. You want to drink that milk because you know this hasn't been in an atmosphere that I'm willing to risk. Because if I take this in, things aren't going to go good for me. This isn't going to be a good day for me because atmosphere matters where you spend your time and the atmosphere in which you dwell and abide matters. (laughs) It was close to the fridge. We all know that doesn't go. Watch David. He says in Psalm 73, we see David's, we see his atmosphere changing. We see We see this drastic atmospheric pressure drops and lifts. And he says this in Psalm 73 and 2. He says, here's what's what's cool. He gets really honest with God. And this is what I like about David in the Bible. He's a man after God's own heart. And he's a man after God's own heart, not because he's perfect. He's far from perfect. He's made lots of mistakes But he's able to get honest with God. And he says, I don't know about you, but as for me, how many knows there's power in honesty? But as for me, you know, my feet, they almost stumbled. I almost messed up and my steps had nearly slipped. I was in a bad place. That means that he's standing somewhere where he's about to slip. He's in an, he's in an atmosphere. He's in a situation where he knows this, is, this could be bad for me. You ever find yourself in one of those situations where you're in between? You have to make up your mind. As for me, kind of sounds similar, doesn't it? As for me and my house, <laughs> oh my goodness, we shall serve the Lord. My steps had nearly slipped. And David goes on to to mention a long list of reasons why his feet were about to slip. He goes through chapter 73. There's four things he mentions through the jinx. The first is, is envy. He's struggling with envy. And then he goes on and he says, I was dealing with offense. I had a wounded spirit. And he goes on and he says, there's hypocrites everywhere. (laughs) I mean, they say they're one thing, but they're just not. Can I get a witness in the house? that, That just, David's like, I don't know about you, but that just messes with me. When people pretend to be something that they're not. And they pretend to be your people, but they're not. And he says, he's struggling with with the wealth of the wicked, struggling to see the wicked prosper. He's seeing wickedness, and it appears in his eyes that they prosper. 
This is why young people in this generation, they have a hard time when a celebrity has two billion dollars and they're wicked. But they say, Brother Nathan, if they're so wicked, why is their house so big? And why is their car so nice? And why are their clothes so expensive? It looks like they're blessed. This is where David is at. He says, I'm struggling to see the wicked prosper. And he's struggling. He's living in a harsh and wicked atmosphere. And watch David's verbiage. Once his spirit has been affected by a wicked atmosphere. It's Psalm 73. I want to show you what I'm talking about. This is what the wicked are like. Always free of care. They go on in a massive well. Surely in vain. I've kept my heart pure. and have washed my hands in innocence. You see what's happening here. There's an atmosphere of despair. Surely I kept my heart pure and I washed my hands and in innocence. And the devil begins to trick him and he says, maybe all of this is in vain. Maybe I'm doing these things for no reason. He says, all the day long I've been afflicted and every morning brings new punishments. If I had spoken out like that, I would have betrayed your children. And when I tried to understand all this, it troubled me deeply. And now we see the atmosphere shift. It's in Psalm 73 and 17. Psalm 73 and 17. It says, until... I was struggling with envy and jealousy and until I got to God's house. Until I entered the sanctuary of God. Watch this. Then I understood their final destiny. I struggled with envy, pride, hypocrites and all these things. Until I got close to God. Until I got in his presence. And then the hypocrites couldn't keep me out of church. Because I just wanted to be close to him. Watch this. Then I understood their final destiny. One translation says, then I understood their end. Watch. In an atmosphere of worry, all he could see is frustration. In an atmosphere of praise, all he could see was the future. When he stepped into an atmosphere of the sanctuary, he went from how it is now to what the final destiny will look like. Atmosphere matters. That's why you can get into an altar and you can think everything's right. And God will begin to open you up and do surgery on you. And say, actually, I need to remove this. Actually, you're struggling with this. And I'm going to help you. And you go from seeing all your frustration to seeing your future. Atmosphere matters. And the thing is, is that when it comes to the sanctuary, here's the powerful revelation from Old Testament to New Testament, is that now you are the sanctuary. You have the authority as a Holy Ghost filled child of God to create an atmosphere. Until I got to the sanctuary. Until I got next to Brother Ryan, I was struggling. But then when I got close to a sanctuary. When I got close to a believer. When I got close to, to anointing. When I got close to the people of God. Can I get a witness? It's like when you get around the people of God, something begins to change. You know what I'm talking about? Do you know how much power is in this room just at the early session where it's lowly attended? There's so much power in here. And there's people that say, if I could just get to Abtab, if I know if I could just get there. 
I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. There's people outside of this room, outside of this sanctuary, that they're not here today, and they're kicking themselves because they're literally saying, if I can just get to the house of God, I know it'll be better. If I can just get to the church. Uh, somebody clap your hands and just thank him if you're thankful to be a part of the church. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God? And that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Psalm 150 and 1 says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Notice that being in the sanctuary is not just is not praise by itself. It says, praise him while you're in the sanctuary. That means that when you get there, you have a responsibility to offer up a praise to God. That's why it's important when the worship team sings today and pastor preaches today that we say amen, hallelujah. We clap our hands. We dance before the Lord. Listen, this is who we are. This is what it means to be apostolic. Don't be ashamed of who you are. You're creating an atmosphere. You're cultivating an atmosphere of breakthrough. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Listen, listen, you can see it all throughout scripture. How believers are atmosphere changers. That God gives you authority and power to walk into detrimental situations and they begin to change. I wish somebody would believe this with me right now because I'm trying to help you. It's a Paul and Silas that can sit in a jail and say, I might sing right now. You know what? I know we're in prison. And I know it looks bad, but there's this new song that just came out. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. And the Bible says that as they sing, everyone's bands are loosed and everyone's prison door swings open. The Bible doesn't even say that the other prisoners We're singing. They're singing from what we can tell in Scripture. It's just the two of them, but we know they're not by themselves. Because the Bible says everyone's bands were loosed. I don't know about you, but if I'm in a prison, I want a Paul there. I want a Silas there. That will say, you know what? Things don't feel good in here, but I'm actually a thermostat. And I'm gonna, we're actually going to change the environment. Oh, my goodness. Actually, atmosphere matters. And if we can just get Jesus here, oh, my goodness. You see, I can't break the chains. But if I can just create an atmosphere to get Jesus here, he can open the door. Because atmosphere matters. Oh, somebody clap your hands and just give them an apostolic praise. This is why I tell my students this often. This is why young people will get on church vans. That's why they'll get on a church van with people they don't even know and say, would you take me to church? Because something deep within them, their parents don't live for God. They don't live in a godly atmosphere. They don't feel the presence of God at home. Their parents have not created an atmosphere of praise. They've not created an atmosphere of safety. They've not created an atmosphere of the word of God, the principles of God. And they can get 
on their knees and they can struggle to feel the presence of God. But they'll tell me, Brother Nathan, when I got to youth class tonight, there's just this peaceful feeling. There's just this peaceful feeling that got on me. I'm telling you, atmosphere matters. Do you know that peaceful feeling, what that is? That means that the people of God have created an atmosphere to where Jesus is here and they feel the presence of God. This is why we shouldn't come into church and just do nothing because somebody's atmosphere needs to change. Somebody's situation needs to change. You may not be in a prison right now. You may have the Holy Ghost, but somebody else needs a prison door to open. And they need you to change the atmosphere for them. It is our job as the church to be atmosphere changers. I'm closing with this. I, I, um, you guys all know me, and Rachel and I have two boys, Judah and Ezra. Judah's four, Ezra's two, and we have a little girl on the way. Um, supposed to come on October 1st. And um, we love bedtime. Now, if you're a parent, you know that bedtime is like one of the craziest moments of the day. And you're trying so hard to get them to go to bed because you're exhausted. But it's also one of the sweetest, most memorable times of the day. Because for some reason, my kids will kind of open up at night and they'll talk. And, and we'll kind of lay there together and say, it's time for bed. And we'll say our prayers. And every night, we go into the room. Judah and Ezra share a room. And we pray a prayer over them. We say, God, would you protect us tonight? Would you keep us safe as we sleep? Would you, create, would you help us create an atmosphere of peace so we can have good dreams? And would you put a hedge of protection around us? And Ezra goes, in Jesus' name. And they pray it every single night. God, keep us safe. A few days ago, lightning struck our AC unit and um, fried it out. And the AC unit is right outside of the boys' room. And we'll pray, God, would you let your angels surround this room right now? And the guy came out, the AC repairman came out. He looked at it and he said, this is so crazy. I've never seen anything like this. Your unit had to have been completely on fire, engulfed in flames. I mean, it's burnt up. Everything inside it is just melted. This thing had to be on fire for a long time. And he said, I've never seen anything like it because whenever that happens, you see it fry all the way up the house and it'll usually catch the house on fire. There's usually firemen that have to come if they're gonna save the house because it'll just burn all the way up those wires. He said, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Everything stops right here at the unit. Nothing has touched your house. Because atmosphere matters. Would you stand with me? I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Anybody feel the presence of God this morning? I know it's early. I know I, know I got a little bit preachy, but could you lift your hands with me and let's pray over our services today? Come on, what kind of atmosphere do you want to have today? What kind of worship service do you want to encounter today? How much of him do you want this morning? You can have it. How much of his presence do you want to feel today? Because you can have it. You will determine it. God is not holding back. He's not wondering if he's going to bless you today. He's ready to give. He's ready to pour out. It's going to be the atmosphere changers. It's going to be the ones that say, have I read my Bible in a while? Have I prayed? And if you feel cold and far from God, God's not afraid. He's ready. He's saying, I'm here to help you today. Would you lift your hands? I'm about to move out of the way, but let's just pray out loud for just a moment. Just a moment. Let's just lift our voices and praise him. Jesus, oh God, I feel your spirit right now. I, I come against any spirit. Spirit of fear, anything that try to taint our praise or stunt our 
praise. We just bind it right now. We prepare our hearts for what you're going to do in this service today. Let's pray for pastor right now. Let's pray for the word of God that's going to go forth today as pastor preaches. God, I'm going to say amen. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to be a thermometer and just sit here and watch what goes on and see if things get better, but I'm going to be a, a I'm going to begin to, to change the atmosphere. I'm going to worship until things start to feel right. I'm, I'm going to do something so that this can be a place of prayer, so that this can be a place of praise. I'm going to create an atmosphere because he's called me to be the sanctuary. I was struggling. I almost slipped until I got to the sanctuary, but now I'm in the presence of God, and I know that we have power and authority. If you believe it in the name of Jesus, would you clap your hands and say, thank you, God. We praise you. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you so much. Please greet one another. Go shake somebody's hand. We're about to enter into our time of worship, but go greet somebody and just tell them it is so good to have you at Apostolic Tabernacle today. Take a quick break. We'll be back in just a moment. It's going to be a powerful service today in Jesus name.